Today, my guest is Dr. Mark Bilby, who holds a PhD from the University of Virginia, graduating in 2012 from its program in Judaism and Christianity in Antiquity, which combined the study of early Christianity, New Testament, Greco-Roman classics, rabbinics, and Tanakh studies. Mark has also earned a master's in library and information science from Drexel University in 2015 and previously completed two master's degrees in theology from the Nazarene Theological Seminary. Today we're discussing Marcion of Sinna, who scholars agree was one of the first people, if not the first, to put together a Christian canon in which some of the letters of Paul combined with what looks like a form of Luke. Mark is going to demonstrate today how he thinks, and some other scholars agree, Marcion's version of Luke predates the version of Luke that you have in your Bible right now. Stay tuned for this one. You're not going to want to miss this. Mark Bilby, welcome to the show. And this topic for Marcion is something that my audience loves because I've talked about Marcion and the evil creator. I had Lewa on. We discussed his his different how people view Marcion, how central he was to this time period. So today we're going to switch it up and talk about his gospel and Luke. And so a lot of scholars think that it's the same gospel with a little bit of slightly differences. And you're saying that Marcion's is actually before Luke. That is fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not alone in this. This has been a position that uh, scholars have held going back more than 200 years. Uh, there's a scholar named Semler who the late 18th century came up with the the basics of this idea. This was the dominant idea in German higher education in the mid 19th century. So famous scholar Ferdinand Christian Bauer, Albert right. Ruschel, and, and several others. Uh, so if you were in German higher education in the 1850s, this would have been the standard view. But then wow. there was a, a backlash after Darwin, after Vatican I, there was a big backlash against this view. And that's where you get the views of Hahn and Zahn and Lightfoot and several others who who kind of re-entrenched the traditional view. You, you see Lightfoot's believe. name everywhere. You yes. cannot you cannot be a scholar or someone who di who digs deep into the sources yeah. without seeing that name everywhere. Citation, citation, citation. Lightfoot, 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 yeah. Lightfoot. So and Will, William Sandy as well. William Sandy. That's another so, name. A, a lot of the yeah. <laughs> a lot of the prestigious British academics, but also together with German academics at the turn of the 20th century, they re-entrenched the traditional kind of proto-orthodox hypothesis. But the the idea that Marcion's gospel was the earlier, simpler form that continued on as kind of a minority position. So there was a scholar named John Knox. He's not to be confused with the Scottish theologian John Knox, but he taught at the University of Chicago. And, and you can actually trace a little bit of a genealogy there where uh, Joseph Tyson was a student of John Knox's at Chicago. And then Tyson wrote a book defending this thesis uh, back in 2006. And then, uh, and then, but it's really picked up steam again just in the last about 15 years. So Matthias Klinghart devoted 10 plus years of his life to researching this and, and writing, you know, massive books in German. Uh, getting through all the manuscript, going through all the manuscript uh, variants and so on. Jason Badoon did a similar thing, though his reconstruction was in English. There's a prominent classicist in Italy named Andrea Nicolodi. He's done his own critical edition of Marcion's Gospel. Dieter Roth did his own critical edition. So there's just been a massive amount of scholarship mm -hmm. looking carefully at this text. And most of the scholars who look carefully at it, they come to the conclusion that it's actually the earlier text. Wow. So this is this is Nicolodi, this is Klinghart, this is Badoon, this is Gramaglia, another Italian scholar, uh, and, and, and several others. Roth is really kind of the odd person out in terms of uh, reinforcing the traditional view, even while looking at Marcion's gospel. And I would say that that prejudice actually undermines his reconstruction in, in some pretty si significant ways. All right, before we start and get into this, I want to ask you, so... Is it safe to say, like, let's say, let's say that you're correct. That would mean that what we're looking at today is one of the original, original four gospels. One of the, one of the main gospels. One of the earliest uh, 
existing gospels. And, you know, this is a, a bone of contention. Usually opponents of Marcion's gospel would say this doesn't exist anymore, you know, because, you know, we know it existed, but, you know, all the manuscripts have been destroyed. There's some debate around Papyrus 69, whether it is an authentic uh, Marcionite um, papyrus. Claire Clebot Lausanne has argued that. Badoon has followed that point of view. Um, but whether it exists or not in as a distinct text in Papyrus 69, in some ways, to me, this is immaterial because, you know, pretty much all scholars, 99% of, of us who look at this would say, this is a version of Luke. The, the only question is, is Marcion's gospel an earlier form of Luke or is it a later abridgment of Luke, right? Those are the two main positions. So the way I look at it is, you know, either Marcion's gospel is like a second draft where Luke was the first draft or Marcion's gospel is a first draft where Luke was the second draft. But in any case, right, you know this working on any book or any any kind of substantive work, uh, if you're m working in multiple versions, there's going to be a lot of overlap between right. the versions. There's a, If you just look at the granular level of, of words, of like looking at each word as a bit of data, yeah, then there's a huge amount of data overlap between these texts. And in that case, the, the data actually residually lives on in the manuscripts. Yeah. So it, it doesn't matter, honestly, whether Marcion's Gospels are earlier or later. It's embedded in it's every there. single manuscript of canonical Luke. So every single manuscript of canonical Luke is a manuscript of Marcion's Gospel. Not I in guess. its overall form, but in terms of the data it contains. Right. That it, these are all Marcionite Gospels that yeah. we have in our, even in our Bibles today. What you're reading, yeah. it, at least in, in some degree, whether it's you say it's 40% or and, 60% or whatever, that data is Marcionite data to some extent. Yeah, and these are Greek Middle Platonists. I don't want to say anti-Jewish people, but they're they're opponents of the traditional Jewish thinking. They have a opposing thing. They have some things that are not in common with these guys. And so, um, well, do you want to comment on that before? Well, I yeah, yeah. Let me step back a little bit. You mentioned it's one of the, potentially one of the earliest gospels. I would just echo that. Um, but there's a diversity of views on that. So, you know, Klinghart, for instance, and, and Vincent, I think, is in the same place of saying the Evangelion is the earliest gospel that we know of and maybe wow. even Marcion for by Vincent's view this is the very first gospel this is like Marcion is really pioneering the genre uh for people like Badoon and and Klinghart and myself um well there's a there's a diversity of views here but but Badoon and I would both see Marcion as more of a passive uh you know um conduit uh rather than like a significant heavy-handed editor and so you know we see him as inheriting an earlier text uh, Klinghart would say this text goes back to the 80s, first century, so it's one of our earliest extant Gospels. And just for context, too, if, if you look through like Eusebius and all of his references to early apologetics and, and early treatises, you'll find that a lot, there's a, you know over a dozen polemics or treatises or works either to or against Marcion in the late second century. So wow. like uh, most of these are gone. We don't have them anymore. Um, yeah. But it's also, to me, it's 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 super important and informative that the very first commentary we have on any gospel at all, any gospel, is on Marcion's gospel. So Tertullian, right? Origen writes commentaries on canonical Luke, canonical Matthew, canonical John. But before Origen wrote any of those commentaries, Tertullian wrote a commentary on Marcion's gospel. Wow. And he, he didn't write a commentary on any other gospel. 